Hi guys, welcome to the Creation of Merlin TV episode one, from a fashion photographer to erotic photographer. My name is Merlin, I am an artist and entertainer, and I'm excited to take you on this journey where we create my one-of-a-kind production company. I consider myself an artist and entertainer because I think those two umbrellas fit the best of everything I'm trying to do, but mainly I do photography. I used to do fashion photography primarily, but recently I've been mainly doing erotic photography. So for me to explain the story best of how I transitioned from a fashion photographer to an erotic photographer, I have to do it through a visual timeline of all the images I've created since I was 12 years old. All right, we'll start with 2007, 2008. This was around the time that I started using GIMP. I started using GIMP because I was playing this game, I Am View, and all of the people had avatars in there and their profile pictures would look very professionally edited. And I would ask them, how'd you do it? And they would tell me they use Photoshop or GIMP. Um, I first used GIMP because they said GIMP would make more sense for me at the time. And then after a while using GIMP for a good like six months to a year, I transitioned to Photoshop and I never looked back. From that day on, I got super obsessed with Photoshop. I did it every single day. I Photoshopped everything I could. Um, I taught myself how to retouch. I did a lot of collage work, a lot of graphic design. Um, I was looking up to artists like Joel Jusko and Boris Vallejo and Julie Bell. I wanted to learn how to draw and then transfer it into Photoshop so I could color it. So basically I wanted to be a digital artist. That was my plan. Fast forward to 2010, 2011. This is the Tumblr era when every teenager had a professional camera. My dad was a professional photographer himself. I asked him if he had another camera to give and he gave me his camera. But the thing is when I got his camera, my plan was to use it for graphic design. I wanted to create more collage work, more um, fantasy work. And then fast forward, one day one of my friends said she wanted a Facebook picture and I offered to take her pictures and I liked the pictures, she liked the pictures, everybody else liked the pictures. So I was like, maybe I could do this. I didn't want to be a portrait photographer, but I wanted to be a fashion photographer. It made sense for me to choose fashion photography because at one point I wanted to be a fashion designer and I would always reblog fashion images on my Tumblr and I've always been obsessed with fashion. After I took those images, I made the decision I'm going to become a fashion photographer. And once I made that decision, I went 100% in. I learned every single thing you could think of about the camera, photography, and fashion. That was my whole personality for about three years. And I taught myself lighting from blogs, YouTube. I taught myself everything you have to know about fashion. I learned about every fashion designer, every fashion magazine, watched every documentary. I learned about every photographer, Richard Avedon, Helmut Newton, Stephen Klein, Merton Marcus. I remember just slobbering over their images and and having their images be my destination i was like this is how my images have to look like and i will not stop until they look like this with that in mind um every single week me and my friends were playing photo shoots different ideas different clothes and shout out to them because they helped me a lot it was so much fun these are experiences i'll never forget um i remember just us running around and just you know just having a lot of fun and and even looking back at these images today, I have to say I'm proud of them. And fast forward to 2013, I finally graduated high school. And this is when things start taking off, sort of. I contacted some modeling agencies and I started photographing their models, testing as they would call it. I was doing that often as well. And the thing about those images, um, Miami is a market that likes the beach, bikinis, guys with abs, sunny pictures and that's not really my style i'm more of a, a dark grungy you know in your face provocative i like high fashion work i like very high fashion work and miami's more commercial more beach more you know so that those are the kind of images i had to take when i was there and i'm and i'm extremely happy about the experiences that i had there meeting these people meeting the models and you know making a lot of people are very happy, but um, there is a disconnect, I feel, towards those images because I remembered wanting to, I just remember at the time wanting more than what I was producing. But around this time, I got my first magazine cover 
I, I was doing editorial work as well. And I was also working on some personal projects. Fast forward to 2014. Um, I did take a year off after high school. I finally moved to New York in 2014 for college. And this was around a time when things start really picking up, you know? Um, I'm going towards a direction where I'm liking my work more. I'm meeting my college peers and we're collaborating. You know, I'm, I'm happy, I'm in New York, you know? This is the city that I've always wanted to be in. So I didn't necessarily want to be in school, but I was in New York, so I was happy. The beginning of 2015, started pretty good as well. Um, I'm taking the pictures that I want, meeting even more people, meeting models, makeup artists, stylists. It, it's a nice time. But in the middle of 2015, I went through this very, very nasty drought. I just remembered wanting to create so much, so much, but not having the opportunity to. I mean, I had the opportunity I could have created, but something was just stopping me. Everything I was making was just not good. And it was just, ugh. But, Fast forward to later that year, my pictures are becoming what I want them to become. I am finally happy with my pictures. I am happy we're here. The, this is the style that I want to achieve. This is the look and I'm, I'm happy as hell. This is beginning 2016. We're now in 2016. I'm happy as hell. We're in the realms of what I want to create. This is the look we're here. This is the style. I'm, so I'm photographing every week, every day even. Um, the school had terrific equipment, terrific studios. So you know I was using that every single day. I did a lot of editors around this time, featured in a lot of magazines around this time. We're in 2016. This is where my journey with eroticism begins. I started shooting classic black and white news, but also narrative and character work. And my first character was Monica and she was a prostitute. Um, prostitutes or escorts, they advertise themselves to what they call a tart part. And I thought this would be a cool art piece to make for Monica, you know, like her fictional um, prostitute advertisement. So from wanting to mimic that, I created this right here, which I initially called uh, my version of pop art. I'm a huge fan of Andy Warhol and the pop art movement. And so that was my, that was my inspiration at the time. But as I'm doing this and changing the skin color and photoshopping, um, I'm realizing I could take this very far. This was definitely around the time where my love for fashion photography was slowly fading. All of a sudden I discovered like this, this, this new world of possibilities. And I remember it was around the time I had an awakening as well. Um, and the awakening told me that I could do anything that I want, anything. If I can do anything that I want, that's what I will do. So, um, <laughs> and erotic photography was it for some reason. I personally think it does more harm than good when you keep things hidden that are an obvious sight. Women's nipples should not be censored. I think we should make a distinction between nudity and sex, you know? Not everything that is nude is sexual. I chose to do this work and I'm still doing this work as an act of protest. You know, my Instagram even got deleted because I post this kind of work. But at the end of the day, I think that's what draws me to do this work, you know? When I was doing fashion photography, I feel like I was making a lot of other people happy. But doing this work, I make, I'm making myself happy and I feel like I'm introducing something new into this world and I'm excited about that. All right, so now we're in 2017. I am still doing a lot of new photography. I am still doing a lot of character photography, but I started doing my first art series and I initially tied it titled it Objectify Me. I basically just wanted to objectify the body as a statement to show that it's not a big deal. It's just a human body, no matter what form it takes, it's still, it's, it, it could still be beautiful. I wanted to pose the models in the most provocative ways and edit them in the most beautiful way I could. You know, I want to show you that the human body, no matter what form it takes, it's never, it, 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 it will always be beautiful, you know? Like, um, my whole philosophy on life in general, no matter what form it is, there's a possibility for it to be beautiful. Beauty is everywhere, everywhere. So come 2018, I'm still doing erotic photography, but I'm still doing fashion photography as well. The goal of every fashion photographer is to get a big fashion campaign. And finally, I sort of got mine. I got to work with GCDS and they wanted to use my newfound style 
and I was so excited because that gave me all the affirmation that I needed that this is a legit style that could be used and I was thankful because somebody established saw my vision so for me to do it was um exciting so also around this time when I after I got my first campaign I still want to do fashion photography but um I didn't want to do it just to do it anymore like I want to do it on a serious level I want to get campaigns so to do that I had to get an agent so that whole year 2018 I was looking for an agent around this time I was looking for an agent I released the coffee table book of Warriors Law which was nude men showering and sleeping and I also released my first photo comic book Monica which was pretty much a story of, you know, Monica who's a prostitute. So as I'm searching for an agent, I finally got an agent. Well, I didn't get an agent. I got one to answer. The one that spoke to me, he's looking at my work, um, going through everything. And then he says he's confused. He doesn't know what I'm trying to do. And I'm not gonna lie, I was confused too. I, I didn't really wanna do fashion photography anymore. And then he told me, um you should choose one you either go all out and be an artist or go all out and be a fashion photographer choose one and i think that was the best thing i could have heard around that time because i just needed that go i just needed one person to tell me merlin go and right after that day i went full in on becoming an artist not an erotic photographer i wanted to become an artist um, but erotic photography, I'm already doing it. So let's, you know, take it to the next level. Let's go, let, let's take it even further. So I'm doing erotic photography right now. I'm doing a lot of series. And around this time, remember I said, I'm not gonna be a fashion photographer anymore. I'm gonna be an artist. And to me, being an artist means you can do whatever you want, no matter the medium. Um, back when I was 11, 10 years old, 12, 13, 14, even forever, I've always wanted to be a performer. Um, I performed since I was a kid, like before photography, before graphic design, before anything, I was performing. Like that was my first love. So at the time I said, I'm gonna be a performer. I'm going to rap, act, sing, dance, whatever it is, I'm going to perform. I'm going to create characters and I'm going to perform. And the first character in mind was this guy named Disco Man. I made a song for him. We did a music video, um, we did another music video, and you know, those songs and videos, they are very bad, looking back at them, but I had to do them. I had to do those videos and songs because I had to earn my stripes, you know? Everything you do, you have to suck in the beginning. I had to earn my stripes. So this is 2019. I, I feel out of love with photography at this point. I don't want to be any erotic photographer. I don't want to be a fashion photographer. I want to be a performer. And this is the perfect time that I'm having this, you know, identity dilemma because COVID happens. We're on lockdown, late 2019, lockdown happens. Perfect. Um, I was very unhappy with the song that I made for Disco Man. And I was like, okay, this is the perfect time that I could just, you know, go into, a, go into hiding and just teach myself how to sing, write as many songs as I can. So from 2019 and until now even, I'm still a student in music. I'm still creating a lot of songs. I'm still learning a lot about music. I'm still a student, you know? Um, but around this time, I remembered as I was doing this, um, a lot of people around me were telling me to quit the music and only do photography. That's what I'm only good at. And that, me being me, that made me want to quit photography completely and solely focus on music. I remember for a short period, I was literally thinking I'm just gonna stop photography completely, let it be a thing of the past and devote myself completely to music. But I don't want anybody to dictate what I do. So um, photography, I love photography. It's a huge part of my artistry. So I decided I'm gonna do both. I'm gonna do both photography and singing. So 2020 comes, I'm releasing music and I'm doing erotic photography. I didn't want to do erotic photography anymore. I wanted to start doing more narrative work, more philosophical work, spiritual based works. But um, I built a, a following around erotic photography. So I felt like I had to continue it and transition slowly into doing narrative work. So this is what I've been doing for the past four years, pretty much from 2020 to 24. 
I, I'm, I've been trying to transition from erotic photography to what I'm doing now. Anything and everything. 2021 comes and my perspective is clear now. My vision is becoming more directed. Now I know the direction I want to go to. I started doing much more erotic photography again. Um, I started having more specific ideas. I started using more elements and I got into Photoshop much more heavier. I started using 3D. Um, my work was getting better. Um, I didn't expect it to get better, but I was just doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it. I did a lot of work during that time. In 2022, finally, we are here, the Cards of Merlin. This is the idea that brings us here to this episode right now. I always wanted to create my own fictional universe like Marvel or DC. Remember in the beginning, I told you my favorite artists back then were Boyce Vallejo, Julie Bell, um, Joe Jusco, and many others that were doing designs for Marvel or DC. And I, around that time, I wanted to be a digital artist solely so I could create my own universe for my own characters and my own stories. I wanted to do my own version of Marvel, you know, my own version of DC. And I realized I could do it with photography 2016, which is why I started doing the Monica, Jerome and Chardonnay stuff, the character work. I realized I could do that in 2016. And then the idea did fade, did fade out after a while. Um, but then 2022, I finally figured out how I could do it. And it's through this idea here right now. Merlin TV. So basically with my style, I decided the planets could represent different higher dimensional races. Um, it's based on astrology. We're going to get much more deeper into it in the future episodes. But I am a huge fan of spirituality and philosophy. So here we are now in the present moment. And in the present moment, I do not consider myself a fashion photographer, nor do I consider myself an erotic photographer. Um, I consider myself an artist, an entertainer. Um, I want to entertain. I want to give you guys a lot of content. I want to give you guys comics. I want to give you guys music. I want to give you guys videos. I want to give you guys film. I want to give you guys anything that could entertain you and give you something to think about, um, put a smile on your face. Um, I'm gonna keep you stimulated. I see a lot of possibilities for this idea. I think we could take this so far um, and I hope you do too. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe. Check out my website, TV. Follow me on Instagram, at TV, TikTok, Twitter, at TV. Make sure to tune into the next episode where we discuss the cards of Merlin and I will give you a deeper explanation of what I'm doing with that. Thank you so much. Have a great day and night.